Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at Locus of Points. Locus of Points is going to be a nice extension to some of the work we've been dealing with involving geometric constructions. Now what exactly is a Locus of Points? Well, a Locus of Points is a set of points which satisfy given conditions. We're going to take a look at three particular examples which we need to know. Here's the first one. It says find the Locus of Points which are two units from a given point A. Now what we're trying to do again is we're trying to find all the points which satisfy a particular given condition, and this is the given condition, two units from a given point A. So here's my given point A, and if I go two units away from that given point A, well I know that I can very much include those four points, because if I count, there's one, two, there's one, two, one, two, and one, two. Now, of course, there are many more points that we can actually go ahead and find that would be a part uh, that would satisfy this particular given, uh, given condition. And say, for example, if I was to measure it, then I would go from here, it would come around this way, all of those points would be two units away. In the same respect, if I was to go this way, those points also would all be two units away. And so basically what I end up coming out with is I come up come up with something that looks very familiar to all of us because we've all used a compass and it's going to look like that. All of those points are going to be exactly two units away from the point A. So therefore, if I go ahead and talk about the locus of points which are two units from a given point A, what I'm really referring to is a circle. It is a circle with center at A with a radius of 2. So if I was to go ahead and draw that circle, it describes the set of points which satisfy this condition. Let's take a look at another example. Here's number 2. It says, find the locus of points equidistant from two given points A and B. So what's the condition? The condition is that we have to make sure that the points that we include in the locus, or the set, is going to be equidistant from two given points A and B. Let's go ahead and take a look at a situation. Here we have A and B. Could it be that point? Well, of course not, because if I go ahead and draw a line there, that distance, of course, is not equal to that distance. So it's got to be someplace between A and B. So let's go ahead and think about a point that might work. And I think this point right over here, and let's just call that point C. I think that point C would actually work. It would satisfy the condition because it is equidistant from the two given points. It is two units away from A, and it's also two units away from B. Now, like in this particular situation here, we didn't want to just stop with one point, or two points, or even four points. We wanted to find all of them. So where are all of them? So the thing is then, is that we're going to actually go ahead and do this. We know that it has to be someplace in the middle between A and B. This, of course, is the only one that's directly in between. But what if I go ahead and choose a point like this and call that point D? Is that point actually equidistant from A and B? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. We know that this distance right over here is going to be equal to that distance over there. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and say that this point right over here is going to be on a line that is perpendicular to A and B. Now there's going to be a good reason for that and we'll see exactly why. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually go ahead and show that these two lengths right here are actually equal. If they are then of course D is also going to be a point which satisfies this condition and therefore is part of the locus of points. Okay, now take a look at my reasoning here. I say that AC is equal to CB, of course, because C is the midpoint of AB, the line segment AB. I'm also going to go ahead and say that these two angles right here, ACD and BCD, are going to be 90 degree angles. Okay, and I'm going to make that happen. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to say that CD is equal to CD. And sure enough, we all know that that's going to be true as well. Now, the important thing is that because of that, I can now say that triangle ACD or ACD is congruent to triangle BCD 
because of the fact of side angle side. I have a side, a corresponding side, an angle, a corresponding angle, and another corresponding sides, so that I can actually go ahead and use side angle side to prove that those two triangles are indeed congruent to each other. Now, what's the important value of that? Is now that I know that these two triangles are congruent, I can now say that AD is in fact equal to DB, which is what we're trying to show in the beginning. So, now the thing is, is that regardless of where D is, so long as it is on this line that is perpendicular and through the midpoint of the line segment that goes through AB, uh, let's go ahead and extend this also here. And I'm going to take a look at, uh, let's go ahead and leave that there. Any point that I actually go ahead and draw, regardless of where D is, I could put D over here, and I could draw these lines over here, those would actually be equal as well. And so what I have now is I know exactly where all of these points are, which are going to be equidistant from two given points A and B, and that is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. So the locus of points equidistant from two given points AB is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. Let's go ahead and take a look at number three. Number three says find the locus of points which are equidistant from two rays which share the same vertex. So here we go, we have ray AB and we also have ray AC. If we were to go ahead and find a point which is equidistant from the two rays, let's just go ahead and call that point D. And I'll put it here. Now I'm going to say that that point is equidistant from two from the two rays. Now, how do we measure the distance from the ray to the point? And this is a very key fact in mathematics: is that if we're going to go ahead and try to find the distance from D to this ray AC, it has to be represented by the shortest distance, and the shortest distance is always going to be the perpendicular distance from the point to the ray. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to draw this here, and I'm going to say that's perpendicular. And I'm also going to go ahead and draw this right here, and say that that's perpendicular as well. And let's just say for, or for the sake of argument, that this D, when I extend this perpendicular line here, is going to intersect the ray AC at C, and also intersect the ray uh, AB at B. Now, Given that the case, and I want to find those points which are equidistant from both rays, I'm going to force this to say, yes, these are indeed equal. Okay, Because there is a point someplace, and let's say, for example, D is one of those points. Now, what's going to happen then is I can actually go ahead and draw a line through from A to D as such. Okay. Watch what happens now. I know that angle ABD, ABD, is equal to angle ACD, ACD, and both of them are going to be equal to 90 for the exact reasons that I gave before. Now, BD is going to be equal to DC because that must be true because we're forcing D to actually satisfy the condition of the situation that we're dealing with. Now, we also know that AD is equal to AD because, of course, that's the same line. Now, what I can say then is that triangle ABD, ABD, is congruent to triangle ACD, ACD, because we can use the right angle hypotenuse side there for congruence, test for congruence. Now, given that, what I can say is that angle BAD, BAD, which is this angle here, is equal to angle CAD, which is this angle there. And because corresponding angles of congruent triangles are equal. Now, what does that mean? That means that any point that I choose on this particular line here, I can almost go ahead and use the exact same reasoning to show that these distances are also going to be equal. So therefore, what I have then is that all of these points on this line here are actually going to be equidistant 
from both rays which share the same vertex. Well, what exactly is that? That is the angle bisector of angle BAC. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up. So remember that a locus of points is a set of points which satisfy given conditions. If we're given a situation where we're looking for points that are a given distance away from a given point, then we know that we're constructing a circle. Okay? If we're looking for the locus of points equidistant from two given points A and B, then what we're looking for is the locus of point of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. And if we're looking for the locus of points which are equidistant from two rays which share the same vertex, then what we're doing is we're finding or we're constructing the angle bisector of the angle BAC. So there you go. Notice that we put quite a bit of things together. We've done some proofs with regards to congruency and use congruency to go ahead and show that locus of points actually do come up using our various construction methods. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of these questions the next time that we meet in class. See you next time. Bye-bye.